a synthetic data set with Gretl AI. Log in with your developer ID. We'll create a new project to load our source data into. We'll work with one of the pre-packaged data sets that you can load directly from the console here. You also have the option of loading your own CSV, JSON, or using our SDK to upload your own data. We'll load the SafeCast IoT radiation measurement data set. Here we're using the client to stream data directly into the Gretel service. As data is being uploaded here, it's being labeled using our NLP. We can go ahead as the data is being uploaded and see real-time streaming data being labeled as it's being uploaded. We can also examine the fields and contents. We can move to a secondary view of the data here, which is called a list view, very similar to uh, Elasticsearch's Kanbana, where you can both examine the tagged data and also the raw data that's being uploaded to our system. This is really a wrapper around our APIs, and here we can see both the raw data that's being uploaded as part of the uh, IoT safecast measurements, and then also the metadata that's being attached by Gretel, including the character offsets that different uh, labels are found at. Field view gives you a view across your entire data set. Um, this allows you to look at statistics but, uh, across different fields, allows you to identify highly unique fields, for example, or ones containing labels that may be sensitive. Entities view gives you a, cross, a view across your data set of the different labels that have been detected. Um, we can see here a large quantity of date, time, and IP addresses, um, and a smaller quantity of unique IDs. Once we understand our data, we'll move and pivot over to our transformation workflows. Uh, I'll note that these are essentially using a set of open source SDKs that can be uh, run locally within your environment, they can be run within a container or within a notebook environment. For simplicity here, we'll go ahead and use a notebook environment and take advantage of Google Colab's free GPU access. Go ahead and click Launch Synthetics Notebook. Notice I also went ahead and grabbed uh, essentially a temporary API key and um, project identifier here that routes back to our project. This allows our notebook to connect directly to the Gretel service and download content. We'll make some few configuration changes here to optimize our settings here. So here we see a basic set of configurations. There's much more detailed configurations available. Um, differential privacy is enabled. We'll go ahead and set 25 epochs. So we want to um, take a, it's a complex data set. We're going to learn a little bit better. And I would like to go ahead and generate a thousand lines of data. The output of running this will be a synthetic model, which can be used to generate arbitrary amounts of data a data frame containing 1,000 lines, as we've specified here, and a report that helps to compare the source versus synthetic data sets and let you understand how good of a job the synthetic model did at creating the, um, recreating the source data set. We'll go ahead and change our runtime type here. So we'll set GPU. This will speed up processing by about 10 times, so it's really nice to use GPU, especially with larger data sets. We'll go ahead and run. What's going to happen now is it's going to ask for a URI. Just like we did before, we'll go back here and grab our shortcut here. Gretel Synthetics is capable of loading uh, data from CSV, JSON, data frame formats as well. Um, or using this URI, we can connect directly back to see the Gretel service and download content from there. We're installing our open source packages as well as the premium packages that come along with API key access. This includes the ability to automatically cluster fields for better synthetic data generation and also the premium reporting capabilities. Here we can get a nice view of our data set. So just like we saw back in the records view here, we're visualizing a data frame. Here we can see uh, AWS ARN, we can see instance IDs, we can see different uh, names of countries, device names, locations, even radiation measurement data. So our goal here is to train a synthetic model on this data set, recreate another model with the same type of distribution, matching differential privacy guarantees, um, and hopefully have um, a completely new, unique data set with none of the original records that have been recreated. Here we can see it's gone ahead and downloaded from the uh, data set already. So we downloaded 5,000 records. You can increase that to a larger set. 
we meant we recommend using at least 5,000 records to build a synthetic data set. Our model training is complete now, and we can see the differential privacy guarantees, including the epsilon and delta values. Generally, we like to say anything less than one on an epsilon value is, is giving you pretty good privacy. Moving down, we can see our automated record validation. So essentially, we uh, infer um, appropriate uh, limits for different uh, records as they're created. If it passes, then uh, it goes through the valid record. If for some reason it doesn't pass, um, such as a categorical variable that doesn't exist in the original input set, or a floating point variable that's outside of the range of the original input set, then it pass, fails validation and gets sent to the failed queue here. Here we can see a data frame created from all of our records. So this is our new synthetic data set. Uh, created completely from uh, the source data, uh, but with uh, essentially none of the records recreated or learned um, completely memorized due to the differential privacy guarantees here. The next question you would have after generating a synthetic data set um, is, is both um, what do I do with it, where we can save it to CSV, JSON, data frame, you can use it however you like, you can put it right back into a new Gretel project that you can enable access to from your team. Um, or the next question is how good of a job did I do at creating the synthetic data? And this is really what the generate report here, premium feature does. Um, all you need is an API key to be able to run this. Um, this can also be run locally within your environment. And here we get some nice statistics, essentially throwing the kitchen sink at our synthetic model, comparing it to our training data set and saying, how good of a job did we do? Here with the overview, here we can see that none of the uh, exact uh, lines were duplicated from the synthetic data set from the original training. We can also look um, at each individual field and look at the distribution of elements in the field and the distance between those in the original training set. So here one would imply that um, none of the fields matched in the original distribution and zero would imply that they were exactly the same. So we get a nice kind of view across here. So here you can see things such as timestamps, um, quite different than the original distribution. Other things that are categorical and very similar, such as country code when there's only four countries present would have a much lower distance score. One of the ones I find personally most interesting going through this training set is looking at the correlation matrices. So essentially we are doing a correlation between each individual field. And, and essentially, you know, what makes data sets interesting is the correlations. For example, if you had an increase in CPU usage, you would expect to see an increase in the correlation of, uh, of temperature ratings. So here we would see um, different fields that have different levels of correlation within the original uh, training data set. We're looking for those fields to be replicated to some degree in the synthetic data set, even with differential privacy turned on, which is inserting some noise. What we can see here visually looking at this is it appears that our synthetic model did a very good job of discovering and replicating essentially the different correlations that existed at a field to field level in the original data. From here, we can look at distributions across different fields. So this would be each individual field, whether it's categorical or numeric, um, looking at the distributions. Here we can see the country codes um, aligning very closely between synthetic data, which you see here in, in green, and the training data, which is in purple. For other fields, such as the location and the latitude here, we can see uh, examples of the training and synthetic data. The training data had 5,000 records in it, and synthetic data only had 1,000. Uh, that we generated. We could generate more if we'd like to, to have a one-to-one -one mapping here, but this gives us a nice view of the distribution across the different records. So we see synthetic data here looking a little bit smoothed out versus the original training data, which makes sense uh, due to the differential privacy, um, inserting noise, um, essentially helping to protect um, individual records. So again here we can see instance IDs, very similar distribution, countries, which should match country code very closely, device names, the origin, which was a constant in all the different records. We can see this was memorized and replayed by the, uh, the model. Other numeric correlations as well. Now that we're happy with our synthetic model, next step really is to uh, decide what you want to do with it. Um, so you can take the model, use it to generate more content as much as you want to. Um, you can save this to CSV, you can save it to JSON. Um, or you can put it directly uh, back into a Gretel project using the Gretel client.